Hello. Uh, today uh, we are starting uh, our course uh, with talking about uh, the basics of English language teaching. And uh, in this session, we'll learn about uh, the key subjects matter of ELT, the two crucial approaches uh, in ELT, and uh, we'll talk about its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and uh, we'll also discuss uh, why a learner-centered approach is preferable. So uh, what is the subject matter of ELT? Usually we teach pronunciation, listening, grammar, lexis, or vocabulary, reading, writing, and, and functional language plus speaking. But how are they connected? And uh, the connection appears to be as follows. There are language systems uh, or knowing what we know, what we can talk about. It's like knowing about the language and uh, there are language skills or doing, meaning uh, what we can do, how we can talk and uh, uh, how we can express what uh, we know. This, just think about it. What is knowing? It's something that you can learn. What is a skill? A skill is something that you need to practice. So, and that is very important because as teachers, we can tell something to our students and they can learn it by heart. But in order to learn a language, they need to keep practicing so that they developed their skills. So let's look at this scheme. It shows us uh, that uh, language systems uh, of knowing about grammar, lexis, pronunciation, and functions uh, are closely and uh, inevitably connected uh, with skills. And skills can only be improved uh, with the help of the systems. It means uh, that uh, we can improve the skill, we can learn and develop the skill only when we know about uh, grammar, lexis, uh, and everything else uh, that is involved here in the skill. And uh, here it is also important to note uh, that the skills uh, may be divided into receptive, such as listening and reading, and productive, such as writing and speaking. So that was uh, the key subject matter of LT. That's what we do. And uh, now let's talk about how we do it. There are numerous approaches uh, in language teaching and uh, they uh, are so diverse. Uh, language teaching started as uh, translation, just uh, teaching from simple translations, uh, then teaching about structures or grammars. Uh, then uh, we went to situations, communicative approach, and so on. And uh, this brief timeline uh, of foreign language uh, uh, teaching can be presented in the slide uh, that shows uh, this progression from grammar translation uh, method uh, to the method that involves uh, communicative teaching, task-based learning, uh, so action-oriented approaches. Uh, and uh, very often, uh, scientists are talking about informed eclecticism. It means that uh, we are choosing the way here, uh, how to teach or the approach, uh, depending on uh, what uh, we need to achieve uh, by our teaching. And uh, finally, in this presentation, uh, we'll try to compare the two most frequently used approaches, uh, grammar translation and communicative or action-oriented. Again, I'm talking about Ukraine, and I'm talking about interclass or my schools mainly. But uh, I'm sure that in most uh, classes in Ukraine, a teacher uh, usually makes a choice uh, between grammar translation and communicative or action-oriented. Because, again, 
Grammar translation method or grammar translation approach is one of the earliest approaches that was used in teaching English. It is used to tell about the language or about the language systems. We usually have the rule and we have the exercises. And uh, the result of it is uh, that a learner gets some knowledge, uh, a learner can decipher a code uh, and then use this code. For example, you have this example here, when we have already many learners uh, will think of uh, present perfect. Again, in exercises, not in their speaking. And uh, as a result, uh, this uh, approach is very teacher-centered because it is based on a teacher and how a teacher explains, then does exercises with a student and then assesses a student. Uh, unlike uh, grammar translation, communicative or action-oriented approach uh, appeared uh, not uh, so long ago. And um, the result was that the teachers started teaching the language instead of teaching about the language. The four skills, you remember them, listening, speaking, writing, and reading, uh, are taught as skills. And everything that we know about the language is used for developing skills. Even the word exercises was placed by, was replaced by the word activities because it's when learners are active, when they work in groups and in pairs and where there are different types of activities that help develop their skills. And uh, the meaningful use of language is important here. And of course, uh, this is a learner-centered approach. And uh, from this slide, uh, we're coming to the last point uh, of uh, this session. We are talking about uh, teacher-centered uh, and uh, learner-centered approaches. Uh, and uh, we are trying to understand uh, what is uh, good and uh, what is uh, not uh, really good and when. So let's uh, compare, but at first, uh, let's see what's in the center. In the center of teacher-centered approach is uh, obviously a teacher, while in the center of a learner-centered approach is a learner. So very often, teachers uh, who stick to teacher-centered approach uh, use grammar translation, uh, while learner-centered approach implies uh, the uses of uh, communicative and action-oriented approaches. Um, so according to the grammar translation and teacher-centered approach, uh, there is a logic uh, about this logic uh, is um, a teacher's logic. So, while in a learner-centered or learner-oriented approach, uh, the logics, uh, logics is often dictated by uh, the learners. Uh, in a teacher-centered classroom, educators talk. Uh, while in a learner-centered classroom, the students uh, are talking more. As a result, a uh, teacher-centered classroom is orderly. But the teacher is very often tired because he or she keeps talking and uh, she feels uh, that uh, she works a lot, but learners have no response or make no response. However, in a learner-centered classroom, learners uh, are responsible for their decision. Responsibility grows and it means that learners become more involved into the process. Sometimes uh, this classroom is chaotic, uh, but as a result, uh, learners uh, can uh, acquire a much better language and develop their skills. So next slide uh, is aimed to uh, tell you 
why is it uh, important uh, to uh, use teachers, uh, not teacher-centered, but learner-centered approach? Because uh, the role of an educator changes. Uh, now educator becomes a facilitator and a partner in learning and students become active learners. Uh, they uh, uh, again uh, are responsible for what they are doing. And that is how they go to a higher level of motivation. So, and instead of uh, individualistic class culture, which is very competitive, uh, this collaboration and support uh, uh, develops in a learner-centered environment. Uh, so, why here a learner-centered approach is so necessary? First of all, uh, because it helps to develop 21st century skills. Uh, students become able to uh, do real world problem solving. And uh, as a result, uh, they are able to set goals and to achieve these goals over time, which uh, you know is important not only in learning a language, but in any sphere of human activity. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, teachers ask me if they should only use one approach. It doesn't seem possible. Uh, the reality is uh, that uh, you always shift uh, between two approaches, especially in Ukraine. Sometimes uh, the teacher-centered approach is not that bad, especially when your students uh, are mature enough uh, to concentrate on what you are telling them. It often happens when you train teachers. Uh, and uh, uh, you should remember that in teacher-centered approach, very often, the teachers just want to do their job well, but uh, they should remember that uh, the focus should be shifted to a learner. And this is the only one way to form the four skills. And that is how our learners will be able to speak. And uh, that is how they will learn the language. So uh, thank you for this. And uh, uh, in next class, uh, we'll talk about who our learners are.